In measuring your blood pressure, you will need a sphygmomanometer. It is an instrument used to measure blood pressure in an artery that consists of a pressure gauge, an inflatable cuff placed around the upper arm, and an inflator bulb or pressure pump. Every measurement has a unit, and the unit for blood pressure would be mmHg, or also known as millimeters mercury. In your sphygmomanometer gauge, each mark stands for a unit of two. You could round up or round off values, but do not make up values which are not present in your gauge. Put the stethoscope earplugs in the ear and be ready to hear the sound at the diaphragm. Tightly fit the cuff with empty air around the upper arm, best on left as it is direct continuation of the heart. Fill the empty cuff with air by pumping through the bulb provided till the dial show around 200 marks. Place the wide head of the stethoscope, which is the diaphragm, entirely on your skin, just above the elbow on the inside of your now straightened arm. Take the rubber bulb and tighten the valve at the base. Be sure to turn the valve all the way clockwise to shut it off so that air doesn't escape when you pump. Do not over tighten the valve. Now, gently turn the bulb's valve counterclockwise slightly so that air is released slowly and steadily. You should release the valve and the pointer should ideally be moving down at a rate of 2 marks per second for accuracy. As you watch the pointer fall back down the gauge, listen for a thumping sound. The clinical name for this is Karat Cough Sounds. Keep your eyes on the gauge. When you first hear thumping, you have your systolic number which represents the greatest amount of pressure exerted on the artery walls as your heart pumps blood. When the thumping fades to silence, you have now your diastolic bottom number, the lowest amount of pressure. In recording your blood pressure measurements, write the two numbers obtained in fraction the top number being the systolic blood pressure. It is when your heart pumps full force and the lower number or the bottom number would be your diastolic blood pressure. It is when your heart rests and refill. There's aspirin, adrenaline, and also aminophilin, amphetamine, adenosine, augmentin, and rifampicin, amoxicillin, penicillin, heparin, and warfarin, and estrogen, progestogen, and caniston, and chloroquine. There's bendroflumathiazide, and also cyclophosphamide, and metoclopramide, acetazolamide, tropicamide, leperamide, amylaride, and cyclozine, and fusamide. And if you're up the duck, then you'd best avoid thalidomide. There's lithium, fluoxetine, and also amitriptyline, peroxetine, digoxin, GTN, and azathioprine, meconazole, atenolol, and also chloramphenicol, and if you want to overdose, there's always paracetamol. There's nightness, and there's phenytoin, zyrtec, and diazepam, and lithium, temazepam, midazolam, clonazepam, testosterone, aldosterone, and valium, and insulin, and lignocaine, and pyroton, and ventolin, and ritalin. There's kefuroxin, kefataxin, kefalexin, kefadrin, and metronidazole, and ketoconazole, trimethoprim, erythromycin, gentamicin, macrolides, mifedipine. 
and active fed and pseudofed and palpol with no sugar in. There's phenylzine and hyacine, ranitidine, cimetidine, potassium and calcium and every kind of vitamin, and pethidine and methadone and speaker cane and heroin and cannabis and Prozac, morphine, alcohol and nicotine. You must remember all these drugs, the names of which you've learnt from me, or fuck them all and get a job in orthopedic surgery.